fellow Sudoku players. Here we are again, Robin, with their next tutorial, tutorial number 26. And today I'm going to show you a few little tricks, particularly when you get into really difficult puzzles. Have you ever found yourself in a situation where you've gone through TMB, you've gone through LCR, you've gone through all those other little techniques and cross meet technique and looking for patterns and so on, and eventually you get to the stage where, what do I do next? Well, um, I'm going to show you what can, you can do. It's Unfortunately, you have to put in all those small little possible numbers. And if you do them correctly, there's all kinds of tricks you can do to get rid of small numbers. Let me show you. Up here I've got, whoops, uh, up here we've got a little cell that I've put small numbers in. And these small numbers are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, can, can go in these cells in that position. And if you notice up here, I've got a row of empty cells and I've put the possible empty numbers in those empty cells using this system. You can use whatever system you like. But let me just show you some, some really neat things. When you first look at this puzzle, I see that we have six empty cells with possible numbers in them. What do you do? Well, the first thing I suggest you do is you look for something like a 3x3. Three three. And it just so happens that I've discovered a 3x3 three three in this puzzle. Let me show you. This is a, there's a 3, 9 here. There's a 1, 3 there. And there's a 1, 3, 9 in there. That is a 3x3. Three three. Let me show you what I mean by a 3x3. Three three. Just to revise, because I have covered this before. A 3x3 three three means you have three numbers that it can only go in three cells. Like this one, 3, 3, 3, or it could be a 1, 1, or it could be a 9, 9. One of these, each of these cells could have either a 1, a 3, or a 9. Now, which one, we don't know yet. But what it does is tell us that all we now have is three other cells empty that we can probably work on. Now this is the most important thing to learn. If you didn't know this, it's important to listen now because when you have a three by three, and I'm gonna mark these, this is a three by three, that cell, this is a three by three, that cell, and this is a three by three, that cell. I can put them up here to help me remember because uh, sometimes my memory fails me, but if you can keep it in your head, that's great too. Now we start to go through these cells along this row and by the way, this is a row that I actually did in a puzzle. And we go along these cells, this, this row, and we look for any number that's 1, 3, or 9 in these cells. There's one here, there's one here, and there's one here. Well, let's start on the left here first. If you look at this left one right here, you will notice that there's a 1 and a 3, so we can't have the 1 and 3, we can cross them out. Okay? That leaves us with a 4 and an 8. Now let's go to this end, this other cell. Well, there's an eight and a nine here, possible, but a nine is part of the three by three, so we can get rid of the nine, and we can make it into a real eight. Now let's see what the ramifications are for that. Here we have an eight we can get rid of. We can get, eliminate that eight. And now guess what? We've only got one number left there, which means it's going to be a big number. Now, whether you cross them out and leave them like that, it's up to you. Some people leave it that way, but it becomes very messy. Some people would prefer to, to rub them out or erase them. I'm going to erase them because it's going to be easier for you to see uh, if you've got a small screen, okay? So here we are. I'm going to rub out the one. It's going to go. I'm out the 3 and the 8, leaves us with a 4, so we can now make a, a big 4. So, that was great, we've got now an 8 and a 4 in those other cells. Now let's go and look over this other cell that's not part of the 3x3. Three three. Is there a 1, 3 or 9 there? Yes, there's a 3, so we can cross out the 3, but you know what? I just noticed 
that you have a four here, so you can cross out that four as well and get rid of that one, and you're left with a six. So we can put the big six in. Isn't that amazing? Just because we spotted a three by three, we could get three more numbers in that row. Now, you can get a three by three like this happening in a row, a column, or a block. Take your pick. It's a matter of just spotting them. Spotting a three by three takes practice. And if you miss it, don't worry. So that's it for today's session. Bye for now.